Please give me the sign that I should resign and leave my job. Have you ever done that, teacher? You know, pray and ask for a sign that, you know, it's a late time for you to quit your job. Well, I'm going to be sharing with you the red flags to watch out for that clearly communicates that it's time for you to look for better opportunities elsewhere. Because one of the things that I want ESL teachers to remember is that we should say no to exploitation. <laughs> so if you want to find out more, please stay tuned on this video. Let's talk about red flag number one. The first one would be low booking rate or low number of students. So when you apply in an ESL company, many of us have this you know, perception that when you log in, you're going to be having students nonstop until the time that you log out. Well, you're lucky if the ESL company that you're a part of um, does that for you. But there are many ESL companies wherein teachers are responsible for the number of students who choose to book their class. It's what we call our booking rate. So if, let's say, you log in at 1 and you log out at, let's say, 7 in the evening and you only have one or two 25-minute classes, then that's a total red flag because not only are you wasting your resources, your internet connection, your your device's um, lifespan, your, your electricity, you're also wasting your time and you're losing money as you work. And that's something that totally defeats the purpose of working because we work to earn money, right? We don't work for charity. And if you're not getting the return of your investment, then it's time for you to leave. But of course, before you, you choose to leave because of low booking rate, focus on what you can do first. Let's say, what can I do to increase my booking rate? Maybe I'm doing something wrong. So try to, you know, um, assess yourself if you've already done everything in your power to improve your booking rate. And if it's a yes, you know, uh, you improved your, your video quality, your internet connection, you have improved your, your teaching methodology, you have made sure that you have increased the value of your classes. So if you've already done those things, yet you still have low booking rate, then it's time for you to leave. Red flag number two, delayed salary. Why would you want to uh, work for a company that doesn't pay you on time? It doesn't make sense, right? I keep on saying this again and again. We work to earn money. We work because we have bills to pay, right? Why would you work for a company that does not pay you on time? Because that is like a company's basic sign of respect for its employees. If they pay you on time, if they pay you for the work that you've already done, and if they couldn't do that, well, that's something that's alarming, honestly. Um, because number one, why aren't they paying you on time? Are they like, what, going bankrupt? Or number two, um, is there a problem with the system? Is this like um, a, a recurring thing that my salary will be delayed this cutoff and then it's going to keep on happening? So those are the things that you have to ask yourself, right? And those are the things that you have to consider. Is the company going bankrupt? And is it going to be like a, um, a recurring a recurrent thing? So um, if you get to encounter you know, issues with your salary, Maybe once or twice, okay, you can let it go. But if it keeps on happening, I definitely leave that company because who knows? Uh, if that company goes bankrupt and you have worked several hours, those hours that you have dedicated for work may not be paid anymore, or it may take like a few weeks or a few months for you to get paid. So that's just the, the basic equation there. You, you, you work and you get paid for your work on time. If that doesn't happen, well, you may be able to, you know, want to leave that company. Red flag number three, demanding management. So let me try to draw a picture of what a demanding management looks like. So what looks like a demanding management is you know, number one, when you don't have control of your time. Like you want to go on rest day, but your boss forces you to work. Like you want to spend time with your family, but your boss says, no, I need you to work on weekends. It's a big no-no. We have lots of students on weekends. you got to work on weekends. Um, number two is they're asking too much and their demands is not in line with the salary that you are receiving. So 
they're asking you to be, you know, always energetic, to use tons of props, like tons and tons of props, dolls, flashcards, um, realia. Uh, they want to uh, have you use videos or audio resources just to make your class more lively. But then again, they're only paying you like a few dollars. By a few dollars, the lowest I've encountered is like, is like less than a dollar. Less than a U.S. dollar. So in Philippine pesos, that's like less than 50 pesos in the, in the Philippines. So that's alarming. You're asking too much, but you're not compensating me for it. Um, another sign of a demanding management would be, let's say, um, a boss who is breathing down your neck. Uh, a boss who micromanages you and looks into every detail of your work, your work output, how you do your work. So you don't have this sense of independence anymore of doing your job the way you, you know, the way you feel like doing it based on your, you know, professional level. This boss of yours just keeps on bugging you and keeps on looking into the le little details. Like, why do you look? sick on this class why do you lack makeup on this class um i noticed that you let's say um on this class you seem bored why is that or i noticed that you're plotting less schedules today how come you're opening less schedules so that kind of management it is something that i personally don't want because i can't tolerate it that's the reason why i chose to work from home that's the reason why i am a freelancer that's the reason why i'm an event host is it's simply because i know i want to have independence to make decisions on my own to do my work the way i think i should do it without you know um, compromising the the output i want to go on rest days if i have to i want to be able to prioritize my family and if i can't do that well i'm going to say bye bye to your company red flag number four teaching platform issues by that i mean you don't have a reliable teaching platform like it keeps on crashing affecting your classes causing you penalties or causing delayed salary you know, the thing about ESL companies is that since it has a higher management, the higher management is the one providing all of your resources, your teaching platform, your training tools, how you'd be able to view your salary, uh, the training materials, and basically it's like a tutor platform. And the thing is, if this platform is unreliable, it keeps on crashing, let's say in the middle of your classes, that would cost you money. Uh, you would get penalized for that. You'll get a penalty. Um, another one, let's say, is because of platform issues. Even though you're able to run your classes, it's too slow, affecting the student's experience. And what happens when your student's experience gets affected? You get a low star review. Because in most companies, um, the student is, you know, given that screen wherein they have to rate their experience with the teacher, five star being the highest, one star being the lowest. And imagine if everything is running too slow, do you think you'd get a five star for that? Another one is, let's say the platform is affecting your video or your audio quality, but you're confident that, you know, everything's good on your side. What if you get a complaint for that? And that's actually a thing with ESL companies. They give your students the, the right to complain about their teachers. Let's say they had a negative experience with this teacher's video or audio quality. They had a negative experience with the teaching methodology of a certain teacher. They could actually write a complaint to the management and guess what? The management will get in touch with you. You can get um, a penalty for that. You can get fired or you know it can affect your overall reputation. You could get a warning that if you do it again, then we might need to let you go. And the thing is, it's not even your fault. So again, that's a fourth red flag. Um, it's a must that your ESL company has a reliable platform because not only will it affect your experience as a teacher, it'll also affect your salary and your students' experience of your class. And the final red flag is unreasonable penalties. One of the ways that an ESL company would ensure quality assurance is to impose penalties on its tutors. So it's like 
a negative reinforcement methodology wherein you're going to get punished if you mess up. You're going to get punished if you have issues with your internet, if the student had a negative experience with your class, or let's say if you didn't show up on time. So it's something that encourages professionalism all throughout the company. So the thing is, um, there are ESL companies who or that impose unreasonable penalties. Let's say uh, you had to you know, cancel a class because there was an emergency. Instead of the usual penalty of not being paid for that class, other ESL companies would penalize you like twice or thrice your, your class fee. For example, you get paid $5 for this class. If you get a penalty for that class, your salary would be deducted $15. Imagine your class fee is $5 per class, but because you had to cancel that class due to an emergency, you're going to be losing thrice your class fee. Um, there are other um, instances, let's say, that, uh, for example, there was a, a power outage. We don't have control over a power outage or what we call in the Philippines brown out. Um, and the thing is, instead of just not being paid for that class, again, imagine you plotted eight classes for the day and your class fee would be deducted from your salary times three. It's just totally inhumane, I'd say. And there are even other companies wherein if a student complains about you, you're going to get a penalty, even though you have proof to back up that it's not your fault, or even though the student has, uh, or the student is the one who has the problem, not you. So, because many ESL companies have this bias uh, towards its students, most of the time the tutors or the teachers are the ones who suffer for it through penalties. So, um, again, I'd say that a penalty is reasonable if it's just a class fee that would be deducted from you. But if it's like double your class fee, triple your class fee, that's totally in your main because problems when you are working from home, when you are an ESL teacher, are inevitable. It really would happen. Either you would lose internet connection, especially here in the Philippines, <laughs> or you would lose power, you'd l lose electricity, your device would crash, or um, knock on wood, there's going to be an emergency in your family. You need to rush someone to the hospital. Or you, the teacher, you aren't feeling well, so you need to cancel your classes. Imagine going through all of those things and being penalized three times your class fee. Uh, 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 that's a big no-no, and that's a sign that you have to leave. There you go, teachers. My five red flags or signs that it's time for you to leave your job. Always remember that we say no to exploitation. You deserve to be respected for who you are, for your time, your resources, your experience. You deserve to be compensated fairly. You deserve just penalties. And of course, you deserve good management. I hope that this video has been an eye-opener for you that you should not tolerate these red flags or signs in your ESL company. Always remember that there are tons of ESL companies out there. You can go for private classes. You can explore other companies. It's never going to be the end of the world because, again, we say no to tutor abuse and exploitation. So there you go, teachers. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel, Teach It Karen. And of course, if you want to know more about how to get accepted to Native Camp, you can also send me an email at askteachakaren at gmail.com. I'd be more than happy to help you out. For more tips on how to be a better ESL teacher, please stay tuned. I promise I will be uploading more videos soon. Bye-bye.